Way back when, when the pebble in your hand was still a mountain, a muckle stain rolled down from the hills to live with people. The folk of Stainwick had lived and dreamed and told stories there between the hills and the sea forever. But nothing like this had ever happened before. If it had, they would have told you about it. Because there was nothing they loved more than a story. You could stop on the street just after breakfast to tell someone about a dream you had and still be telling them at lunchtime. They were just fine folk who let time take its time. If there was nothing to say, they talked about the weather. Fine day, they said to each other, if it wasn't windy or rainy, which it very often was. If anyone had a problem, they met in the street and talked about it. Someone always knew how to fix it. And if you had a question that nobody could answer, you climbed up into the hills and asked the rocks, the fog and the ravens. And if you still didn't know what to do, sleep on it, the oldest woman in the village would say. And you did. And most of the time, it worked. One day, the shopkeeper put a clock in the shop window. What's that for? asked the postie. It tells the time, said the shopkeeper. Look, it's five minutes past nine. What does that mean? said the postie. It means I'm late, said the shopkeeper, and she opened the shop. The funny thing was that as soon as they knew what time it was, folk felt busier than they ever had before. All anybody ever said was, can't stop, I'm in a hurry. Nobody had time to help anybody else now. The only person who wasn't busy was the oldest woman in Stainwick. She was too old to hurry, and she let time take its time. But hers was the biggest problem of all. Nobody ever stopped to speak anymore. Nobody came up to talk to the rocks or the fog or the ravens either. And maybe that's why one muckle stain on the mountain leaned forward one evening, almost as if it was looking down into the village. But it leaned a little too far. Just as the sun came up, the muckle stain rolled down the street and stuck fast between the net shed and the post office. Soon it was time for the villagers to get up. The letters will be late, the postie said. The tide's about to turn, fretted the fisherman who couldn't get down to the harbour. I have to open the school, said the teacher. How else will the children learn to tell the time? We'll have to blow it up, said the quarry woman, sizing up the stone and working out how many sticks of dynamite she would need. We'll have to shove it out the way, the post he shouted back, rolling up his sleeves. Better sleep on it, said the old woman. But they weren't listening. They puzzled, complained and worried until the sun went down. And then they all went back into their houses and shut their doors behind them. The old woman's legs weren't strong enough to carry her up into the hills. Better sleep on it, she said. She curried into the rough rock. She pulled the fog up around her neck. And she started to snore. Rest your weary head a while and dream. On the wing of the raven Then time took its own time High above the mountain stone And out across the sea The 
villagers dreamed of the seasons passing. A pair of ravens flew down from the mountain. Flying, flying. Back and forth they visited the stone, with beaks full of sticks and wool and rubbish they'd found on the beach. The hairs on the old woman's chin grew long. The villagers dreamed of the years turning. The ravens laid two sky blue eggs. In their own time, two big blind chicks hatched out. They were called Og and Bog and covered in stiff grey quills and they loved to talk. Og and Bog told each other stories until the day their eyes opened. They gossiped while they sprouted tough and shiny feathers. They flapped their wings until they were strong enough to fly. Even when they could fly right up into the hills, they always came home to the muckle stain and the old woman. And if it came a coarse day, they kept her warm. They ate on the stone, and roosted on the stone, and pooped on the stone, and in time the poop turned to soil. And still the village slept. But one day Og pooped out a seed. Time took its own sweet time. The tiny tree stretched its tender leaves. After a few years, it gushed out blossom. The seasons passed. The old woman snoozed in the shelter of the storm. In summer, blossoms fell from the growing fruit. The muckle stain cast a cool shadow over the old woman. In autumn, the fruit turned to nuts. Dry old boughs fell, and new twiglets grew, spring after spring, until Og and Bog were old birds. And still the villagers slept, until one day there came an enormous storm. The wind whipped the sea into waves that rushed up the street. The muckle stain sheltered the old woman. The branches above her head whirled and groaned until there came such a gust that one gnarled old bough broke off and crashed through the shop window. Bog flew out to where the sea was deepest and dropped the clock into the waves where no one but sea creatures could hear it ticking. Rise and shine, called the old woman, cricking her stiff neck and yawning. The villagers stirred under bedclothes that hadn't been changed for a hundred years. They ran to speak to the old woman. Fine day, she said as the last gust of wind withered to a whisper. After a hundred years of sleep, they had a lot of catching up to do. What about this stone, said the postie, rolling up the sleeves of his pyjamas. But Og and Bog croaked and barked, flying in fast circles over his head. What about it? said the oldest woman. And so they left the muckle stain where it was. 
because there was nothing the folk of Stainwick loved more than a tall story, and the Mucklestain was a good place to tell one. You could roll up there right after breakfast to tell someone about a dream you had, and still be telling them when the sun went down. Somehow they didn't need much sleep. They stayed up late and woke up early. They were just fine folk who let time take its time. Rest your 